the Lord's candle of hope is alive and well. The candle of adversity has gone out. The one who is the pirate of pirates has been removed. And so the candle of latter-day enlightenment comes forth. The candle of us being able to beat our sword into the sickle of his harvest. The candle of the harvest is ready. And it is time. The dawn of love has come. Early, early in the morning, we need to get out. Uh, early bird catches the worm, don't you know? And so in this hour of love's greatest harvest power coming forth to energize and to empower us, to bring us to the place of compassion where we actually start to feel other people's pain around us. Let it, us embrace those that are hurting as our smiles turn their frowns around at least for a moment. And in this hour, it is time more than ever to realize that the harvest of love has drawn near and is now. And for that reason, Isa Yeshua Jesus, Emmanuel, living Lord of love, he comes forth in this hour as the sower of the seed of love, overtaking his own reaper, manifesting fully the prophecy of Amos 7. So do not judge each day by the harvest that we reap, but by the seeds that we have planted. And know that what we plant in the soil of contemplation, we shall reap in the harvest of love's greatest action. And in seed time we must learn, and in harvest time we must teach. In the winter we shall be able to enjoy. It is only the farmer of love who faithfully plants seeds of charity, benevolence, and the magnificence of love's beneficence in the spring. And it is only he that can reap a harvest in the autumn. There's a time for everything and a, everything a time. And each of us has about 40 chan chances to accomplish our goals in life. And uh, this is true because uh, if you look at all the farmers, they can expect to have about 40, 40 growing seasons, uh, giving them just about 40 chances to improve every harvest. And so we must always go forward. Uh, and when we do stumble and go two steps forward, one step back, know that we're still going after all in the right direction. And in this hour, it's time that we stop judging each day by the harvest we reap, but by the, the seeds that we have treasured, even the seed uh, the size of a mustard grain, because love comes forth even in a small seed. And so these are the days when the harvest is plentiful and the laborers are very few. Uh, because most of us do not realize that inside of every seed lays the potential for an incredible harvest. And so it is time uh, to return to the roots of all the right understandings of beating the sword into the sickle upon this latter-day mountain of overflowing spiritual food foretold clearly by Christ, who will come and feed the master's household meat by he who feeds the master's household. It is he who would restore all things by the word of Malachi 3.1, even the word of his kingdom age covenant, as that Lord of love says unto all people of love who has their love moving as a little child. He says, I am your God. You are my people. I have forgiven your worst blasphemies and iniquity, and I will never remember it. Remember Moving Satan as the accuser of their brethren uh, who would not have allowed God to 
not remember because always yada yada telling him all about her wickedness. And in this hour, the Lord says, I'll write my unbreakable law of love upon your hearts. And there are no conditions. For the Lord says, I desire to remove all unloving, bad religiosity in favor of lifting up loving spirituality so your kindness can go forth. And in this hour, the Lord God Almighty, he says unto each and every uh, one of his faithful few, and he's calling all of our names as if we were the only one. He says, if you will give me the desire of my heart and be just kind to people and love people you can see, because if you can't do that, you cannot love a God that you cannot see. You would be nothing but a hypocrite. So he says unto all people, come, let me give you rest, and I shall return my fierce, terrifying anger. Stop the fast-rising great tribulation in the days of the great ferocious bear of World War Z, standing up Daniel 7, 5, embracing, chewing on the three ribs of Crimea, Donetsk, and Luhansk of the great Soviet bear as he hears the words of World War III. Now you may go eat all the flesh that you would like. But praise the Lord, I am Shiloh, whose eyes are red and dull of mine, and I hold the scepter of all kingdom age authority. And I shine the light on the truth that our Lord God said, unless these days were cut short by his word alone, that no flesh could be saved, his word will make a way where it has seemed to be none. For he is pulling down the mountains, lifting up the valleys. This is the time for the appointment of Jeremiah, the appointment of Haggai 2-2, to, to tear down all kingdoms of man's uh, wixed up merge and their faulty error-filled understanding. For in this day when our Lord God says, I am your God, you are my people, then comes the obsolescence of all faith upon earth, as Paul the Apostle wrote in the last sentence of Hebrews 8, after reiterating and repeating the words. Know that in the latter days, Peter said that the Elijah task servant, the writer, would come line by line, precept by precept, would that strong and mighty one come forth as a destroying storm because of the appointment of Jeremiah. And the message of God's word was only closed until the time of the end, Daniel 12, 9, so that the shattering of the power of people, Daniel 12, 7, could happen in the days of the latter day Daniel, who would arise to embrace his destiny as Elijah, Daniel 12, 13. I've known my identity for 30 years. I've had open-eyed visions. I wrote 200 books, then I made 10,000 videos. And then you think I could ever stop? No, people can ignore me all day long and they are spitting at Christ while they do. And so in this hour, it is time to realize that there is no faith on earth. Uh, the majority of faith out there all has conditions upon it. And conditional love is not even love at all. Love is not even love unless it is given away with no expectation and no conceived strings attached. It makes divine love immediately fade away. And in this hour, the Lord shall remove from off this mountain of overflowing food from prepared from one that Christ foretold in Matthew uh, 24, 45 would come and feed the master's household with overflowing delicacies. And in this hour, the Lord is preparing our way, even though it has seemed that there was no way for his love is overflowing as a mighty river to bring forth a new season of Habakkuk's vision unfolding. And so it's therefore time for a true gospel of hope everlasting. The flying scroll of Zechariah 5 is what I read, the everlasting gospel of Revelation 14. Sir Isaac Newton foretold me. In the latter days, he said, Elijah would arise, insisting on his literal interpretations of prophecy, admits much clamor and opposition. For I tell you truly, to believe in Jesus has always meant shit. And if you will not lift up that which glorifies love, he will take the shit diarrhea from your feast, as Malachi 2 says, and put it in your face. Because the God's honest truth, restored of his love's greatest understanding, is that 
Our love is him living in us. There is no good man, not even one. None of you are any damn good. I know I'm no damn good, but it's our beloved love of the ages, the Lord Jesus Christ Almighty living within us that makes us good, lest any man boast. And so in this hour, it is time for the true gospel of love. And it's additionally the happiest day for a gospel of dreams wished for and for the hour of the meaning of heaven sent visions to come forth since undoubtedly this is finally the most exciting season for a multitude of manifested hopes all preparing to come forth from our great beyond as the rain the latter rain and the former rain all together as a great flood of his love pouring out upon all flesh as Acts 2 and Joel 2 says and in this hour we can say to that flood of love to stop in the middle of the, of the our driest valley and he will not obey he will uproot our trees and right from the ugliest tainted poisoned roots poisonous fruits of a poisonous tree have we been embracing the whole world embraces a god of conditional love when he has never been uh, one of conditional love at all. It was hidden in the middle of the Bible in the Kingdom Age New Covenant that was foretold to be given to Israel in the latter days in Jeremiah 31 1. And if it was not given to Israel in the latter days, then uh, God would be a liar and the book would be a toilet paper. But the truth is, early Christians stole Christ. Israel's identity. First they stole the book, they stole the prophecies, they stole the Hebrew writings, and then they declared we are Israel and all the prophecy is really for us. And it was not. And so it's time to realize that the mystery of God is over of Revelation 10, 7, because the first is last and the seventh perfect trumpet has sounded first because of that. And only to the chosen ones of our majesty of majesties, standing in the glory of his love, uh, with the sickle of his love in his hand, sunk deeply into the earth now. Only through him shall the fruition of our desires uh, will bring him all of the glory that he deserves. Uh, and it's time, white on rice, his glory shall cover the earth as clouds cover the skies, as... Uh, as stars cover the highest heavens and realize in this hour that the hopes of all children of light include themselves becoming one with our almighty Lord of love. He is the only God of manifested dreams, realized aspirations, and beautiful inspirations of love that have finally come alive unto our seeing and unto our hearts if we will have any discernment at all. And many hopes are now coming truth, beloved. And this is the awesome time when our roaring lion of Zion is roaring as loudly as an itty bitty kitty's tiniest whispering purr, happy and joyous. And that is what which this way comes because it's not by power nor by might, but only by the gentle spirit of love that he shall accomplish all. And we will all rise as victors because of our living victory in all who is victorious. And as us enlightened souls let our falsehoods of love's uh, condemnation fall away, then we will see that his brightest uh, illumination, and then we will never be dismayed, for his smile of hope is everlasting. And know that only overcomers by his spilled blood of the Lamb, slain before the foundation of the earth for all of us, shall soon find our most important hopes standing totally unmovable under the shadow of that giver of absolute victory. After all, our Lord of love goes far out of his way, by way of his spirit of eons, which always soars high above as the most regal eagle of the eagle the most regal eagle of the eons. He alone, the holy dove of love, is our eagle of splendor. And he alights upon the shoulders of those willing to receive uh, the beautiful things of hope that they've hoped for, that will come forth courtesy of his beloved heart of hearts for us. 
And so in this hour, we must rev it up and we must get excited and we must hold up that candle to the nations. For in this hour, the Lord has promised to remove his veil concerning his love from off all nations. And that has he done. The son of righteousness has arisen with healing in his wing from the fluttering dove of love. And all who will embrace his pinions shall not be stabbed by knives, but, but the pinions shall poke them uh, sensibly so that their sense, senselessness fades away as the night of our doom flees.